I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Hambledon in Hampshire. It's about 12 miles to the north of Portsmouth and we're going to be doing a roughly three mile circular route starting and finishing in the village. It's going to take us across some wonderful open fields with some quite beautiful scenery and some quite gorgeous wooded areas as well and right at the end we're going to have a look at the cradle of cricket but I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on. Now we're filming on a, well, a quite glorious spring morning the sun is out it's already about 12 or 13 degrees and due to get a lot warmer later on I probably don't need this jacket. <laughs> Are we ready? He's ready for a snooze I think let's go. Well I parked my car just in one of the side streets and before we kick out into the countryside as it were I thought we'd have a little look through the village because it's ever so pretty and this uh, street here which is the high street in particular is quite uh, quite gorgeous isn't it? I did find an old photograph of it and it hasn't changed too much over the years well apart from the cars of course and a local did tell me that this little property here, Langtree, that used to be a butcher's years ago and look you can still see the meat hooks outside. Well there's the church, let's have a, a little wander up there. Oh, just make our way up to the church, actually there's a quite magnificent old yew tree to my right and here we are, this is the uh, the Church of St Peter and St Paul set on very much higher ground over the village. Uh, most of it dates from uh, well, originally the 13th century although within its shell there's actually a Saxon church from the 11th century so that would make it uh, the oldest building in Hambledon. The original Saxon structure was just a nave and chancel and the church started to be expanded in the 12th century and to a greater extent in the 13th century when the, the western tower was added. But there was a big fire in 1788 and the tower was rebuilt in 1794. I think it holds six bells and then there was a significant uh, restoration in 1876. Interesting just to the side of the porch there's a little looks like a old stone drain pipe sticking out. I wonder if that's where the priest or hermit used to live behind there and I did read <laughs> in the notes that um, there is a mass dial here but I've looked all over the place I can't find it. Uh, just coming back down the high street the very bottom you've got a shop and it's got people's market written above reminder of course that the village had a market here as far back as 1260. Indeed the, the letters patent for holding the markets was always stamped Broad Hapney which was the toll paid to the local lord of the manor for setting up a booth and today you've got Broad Hapney down to the east of the village. In 1612 it used to have two fairs here but those have long gone. It really is quite a delightful little village. It's about 69 listed buildings I believe in total and just by me here the building that was once the George Inn and Hotel now a uh, private house. It is an old 18th century coaching inn. You used to be able to catch a stagecoach here to Petersfield and then on to London and the building hosted many a hunt ball and in the late 18th century you could get crowds of 20,000 people coming to watch the cricket just up the road. Apparently at one time there were at least five pubs in the village and I did see one account suggest that there might even be as many as 12. Now there's just the Vine pub part of which dates to the 16th century and it's got a 30 foot well but I saw that there was some scaffolding over it at the moment although I'll see if I can put up an old picture so you can see what it looks like. Okay well that's a, a quick little look at the village. I say it is full of quite exquisite individual 
houses, many of them with evidence of their former use. So we're now going to head out into the countryside, heading southwards. Well, it didn't take us long to get out into the countryside. We're at the foot of Speltham Down. I think that's how you pronounce it. And if I turn the camera around, you can see it's National Trust. I think jointly owned with the, um, the village as well. I think they all bought it in 1984, I was reading. Now they've got a very good little system here. I don't know if you can see that. There are various discs. So if you ever see a red disc, I've got to keep Logan on the lead. Green is okay. So the first field is red because there's obviously some sheep there. But the little gate in the distance, there's a green disc on that. So we haven't got to keep on the lead for too long. just found this seat at the top of the down excellent place to just sit down and admire the view because it really is quite exquisite west facing and with the Sun beaming down getting all the colors out today and this wonderful just looking across on the far side it looks as though there's some form of um, some jumps and there's hurdles on one side and little mini steeplechases on the other so I wonder if there's a either a horse training racehorse training yard around here or perhaps a, a pre-training yard I don't know but just beyond those jumps you can see that row of trees woods that's uh, will be in there on our homeward leg but ah oh, it really is so peaceful Beautiful. top of the down now a little uphill bit over for the moment anyway again it's glorious up here a little bit of a wind which is great it's just cooling us down but uh, hardly any clouds now all blue sky and just behind me here looks like a field of wheat I think not 100% sure so we're gonna carry on along the side of this field and should hopefully meet up with a little track which we follow for about 200 yards or so. Now I know some folk do uh, follow these uh, walks and do them later. I said I was going down a track, it's actually a little tarmac road. And what you want to need to look out for is just behind me here, this green gate. And then we're going to carry on along this farm track. Just noticed there's a, just seeing this little derelict building. I th initially I thought it was just a farm building but it does have a sort of World War II look about it doesn't it with a what might be a blast wall in front of the entrance. I know back in the Second World War this area around here was in fact a D-Day marshalling yard with up to a thousand men and 150 vehicles so maybe um, maybe that 
is its origin. Don't know. Just making our way down this pretty little sunken path, which is giving us a little bit of shade. And uh, oh, look at those. Uh, I've no idea what those are, but they're pretty <laughs> in the uh, golden sunshine there. You can probably hear a road because we're just about to hit a B road and we've just got to follow the side of that only for about 40 yards or so. Right, another quick update on the route. We've just come down that little B road and come off where there's a, a gate. Now there are two paths, just make sure you take the, the correct one. We are going to carry on along this path with a big pylon on our left hand side and we're going to be heading right up into that wood there. We won't be doing that path that uh, carries to the south. It's all right, it's a scary bag. It won't bite. Are you going to be brave? <laughs> You're not sure are you? Just check it out. I think we're going to be all right. Although having said that, well this is going to test our dexterity. <laughs> we made our way up to the other side of the, uh, the valley, just about to go into Madam's Copse. But before we do, I have got to show you this view looking on the other side of the, the valley. Just slowly turn the camera around. Isn't that beautiful? And that very impressive building over on the other side of the valley is called Berry Lodge. I think originally it was a hunting lodge, but that building itself was uh, constructed, well, according to two sources, uh, 1806. Um, historic England have got it as 1850, so let's just say 19th century. <laughs> and I was also reading that a Roman villa, or the remains of a villa, were found uh, just to the side of the house. Beautiful views anyway. Well, I've been looking forward to uh, this part of the walk. We're in Madam's Copse and it's well known for wild flowers. Now we're probably just a little bit too early for, for bluebells but uh, uh, even to my untrained eye we've got some um, what are these primroses? I think so. Another quick update on the route. We've come down a little uh, tarmac track called Menslands Lane, I think it was called. And we turn left up Cam's Hill for about 30 yards. And now we're gonna head along this um, rather pretty little sunken track. Again, we're on the sort of western side of the valley with the village of Hambledon nestled below on our right. Oh, isn't that pretty? Little grain store, still with the uh, staddle stones at the bottom to uh, protect from vermin. Okay, right, continue along here. Now, I must say along this route, whilst there are quite a few styles, they are all very dog friendly. As oh, Logan will now demonstrate. Go on, three you go. Go on, be brave. <laughs> now, Daddy's got to get over this bit. Oh, 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 that's done my knees. The world are good. Well, another beautiful view to just to sit back and enjoy and admire. Now, those are those jumps that we saw. So right at the start, so yeah, the seat that we were originally on must have been right up on the valley on the other side. And there's the village of Hamilton with the church in the background there. And then just on the brow of the hill, there's a vineyard. And that is the uh, Hamilton Vineyard, one of the UK's top sparkling wine producers. I think actually it's one of the oldest commercial vineyards in England, established uh, originally in 1952 or 53, and wine was first made there in 1955, and it was resurrected in the early 2000s, and there's now something like, well, 60 acres here and surrounding areas. 
and I believe it might be the only gravity fed winery in the UK. Well, we'll just say goodbye to that view and now we're going to uh, head into a little bit of woodland. The birds singing away. I've got to be a little bit careful here because uh, you can see it's quite a steep drop. I think that's an old um, chalk pit down there. It's uh, so peaceful in here. Now, I was going to do a, a little detour to show you something called the Murder Stone. It was basically a stone that commemorates the spot in 1782 where a chap called uh, James Stairs, a labourer, was murdered by uh, John Taylor. And Taylor was actually executed for the crime on circumstantial evidence, I believe. They found his blood-stained smock, which was identified by his mother. But uh, I'm not going to look for it because I read on uh, a website that last June uh, it was badly damaged, possibly by a, a, a tractor, and so it was taken away by the local parish council and they're looking after it uh, while it's being repaired. So I don't think it's, it's there. Otherwise, I'll have gone out of my way to show it to you. <laughs> right, so we are now going to carry on, say, continuing to head. I've lost my, <laughs> lost my bearings. Well, the sun's behind me, so that's in the south. So we must be heading north and uh, towards Lithy's Hangar. Last little bit to uh, watch out for if you're doing the walk. On the map, we've been following a side of a field. Look out for a gate, and then you almost double back on yourself. I'll show the point on the on the screen on the map. And just behind me here, just look out for this little uh, sunken pond. Well, I've just noticed some <laughs> some alpacas looking somewhat inquisitively at me on the. Uh, in the distance there. I have got Logan on the lead. Okay, so we are now going to follow this uh, footpath down here. We're very much on the homeward leg now. We're actually on the Wayfarer's Walk, which is a, a 71 mile long distance path from Walbury Hill in Berkshire to Emsworth in Hampshire. And it's basically an ancient route that might have been used by drovers taking cattle for export Oh, lovely to see the beehives in that back garden there. Beware of bull crumbs. <laughs> and what does this say? Trespasses will be composted. Brilliant. Okay, well, we're just going to follow this path back down into the village, and, and uh, that's where we'll get back to the car, but not quite the end of the video because I'm going to get into the car and drive a little bit to the uh, east of the village, there's something I want to show you there. Well, I've driven about a mile, mile and a half or so to the northeast of the village, and I'm right by the Bat and Ball pub. Just looking at it there. It's uh, built in 1730, and it's actually situated opposite, if I turn round the broad halfpenny down cricket ground where the Broad Hapney Brigham cricket team currently play. The actual pub, in fact, was originally the pavilion and clubhouse, and the landlord there, a chap called Richard Nyron, between 1762 and 1772, was one of the best cricketers in England. Well, the ground has got a lot of history attached to it. Between 1753 and 1782, it was the home of the Hamilton Cricket Club, They'd been formed in 1750. They now play at uh, Brook Lane, 
which is to the west of here and a little bit nearer to the village itself. Well, the ground here is known as the Cradle of Cricket. And although cricket had been played in some format for around 200 years before the club was formed, Hambledon really took on the responsibility of developing the laws of modern day cricket, including things like the introduction of a third stump and regulations of the bat width. And by the late 1770s, the club was the foremost cricket side in England. Now on the 24th of June 1772, a Hambleton or Hampshire side beat an England 11 here on this ground and many people consider that to be the first ever first class game of cricket and between 1772 and 1796 the two sides met on 51 occasions with Hambleton winning 29 times and on the 13th of July 1775 John Small scored 136 not out for Hampshire against Surrey on this ground for what was possibly the first ever recorded first class century. In 1782 Hambledon moved to Windmill Down and 1792 was the last time any cricket was played here for 116 years. It reverted to agricultural use. But in 1908 this obelisk was erected that's just behind me here. It was unveiled with 5,000 people coming to see a match between a Hambledon 11 and an All England 11 on the resurrected ground. It really wasn't returned to regular cricket until 1925 and in 1959 the Broad Hapney Brigands started playing here and they're still here today. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a thumbs up and a like and do make a comment and as I always say if you haven't already subscribed please do so that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had a super walk today the weather has been quite exquisite quite a bit of uh, variety and great to finish up at the cradle of cricket so until we meet again Thanks for watching and cheerio. Right, I'll bat first, you can bowl. All right? <laughs>